click it. I, <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to <Hi>. uh, <laughs> I'm just like, anyway. I just know this is going to be chaos already. Um, um, welcome to episode four of 2022. This is yeah. the live show where we're talking about confessions by Kane Minato. Um, oh. Translated by Steven Snyder. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> what a beautiful book. I'm joined by two new faces to the book club. You you guys have never been here before. Um, what I normally do is I have um, the person who's new or who it's been the longest since they've been here to pitch the book to us. But I yeah. So I thought I'd have both of you do it. I don't know if you did your homework. Um, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. ready. I, uh, I gave Gavin and Katie, I'm going to have them introduce themselves in a second. But um, I had them sum up the book in 10 words. I want to hear how they would give us the plot in 10 words in their own in their own words. So that's the okay. challenge. Um, so if you want to introduce yourselves, I would love to hear um, like your favorite thrillers or horror so people can get to know you. Tell us about your channel at all if you want to share anything. Um, and then after that, we'll pitch the book. And while they're doing that, if you all want to um, why don't you go ahead and give us your rating if you read the book? Like, let's just get into it. Let's talk about it. I don't want to hear anybody's rating yet. And we're going to keep it spoiler free for a little bit. Okay. All right. Got okay. It. <laughs> uh, yay. Okay. So I'm Gavin and I'm from How to Know Gavin. I read a lot of different things and like the age ranges, middle grade, young adult, adult. Honestly, no kind of barrier here. I will read anything. Um, and yeah, I. Thriller, okay, thriller. So, I, thriller is still quite a newish horror. It's still kind of a newish thing. But I would say probably like my favorite thriller at the minute is this one. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> I don't. Sorry. I was like, I didn't realize, oh, I, was what is that? I didn't realize Kayla was working at the Stop! time. Stop. I apologize. I do have a. I do have a serious one. Okay. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, so. I have one that has stuck with me. I wouldn't exactly say it was one that I'd recommend, but this is like a book that has really stuck with me. And that is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. And this was like inspired by a true story, which is probably why it stayed with me because of how harrowing and disturbing it is. Um, so I seriously would not recommend it to everyone. I genuinely wouldn't. Um, but it is so... Oh, like when I think about it, I kind of like want to cry. So I'll probably, <laughs> honestly, it's like it's it t tears your heart out. It genuinely tears your heart out. It's so sad. Uh, right. Anyway, okay, uh, I would be interested to see what you think of it, but also wouldn't be surprised if you DNF because it's extreme. It is <laughs> extreme. Um, and okay, so I have four different versions of this ten words or less thing. It depends on what you want to hear. Do you want to hear like? Um, a Lady Gaga kind of summary? Do you want to hear a kind of um, straight to the point kind of summary? Do you want, um, what's the other ones? Do you want like bare bones? Like it, it depends what you want. Oh, I want you the Lady time. Gaga. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Murder, scandal, next POV, next POV, murder, next POV, bomb. <laughs> bomb. Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have three more just in case that one failed. I love it. I think it was 10 words. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I think that sums it up. Yeah, I think so too. Katie, you don't even need to talk. I know. <laughs> you, you killed it. You be, Actually, that is what I wrote as well. Milk, lots of milk. Stop. <laughs> uh, I, and yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much me summed up, I think. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I think I linked you guys in the description. I'm not totally sure. I hope so. How dare I? How dare I? Where'd she go? Kitty, you all right? What'd she got? I was wearing this for the last week. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was wondering when you popped up, I was like, Katie definitely owns the merch. You're like, Katie what? hates me and she's here to expose it. On <laughs> like, I was getting ready to slate you online. Not going to lie, Katie. I'm gonna it's my Katie anonymous was... account. <laughs> Katie came in later, but Gavin and I were like, twinsies. And then she popped it. I was wearing this last night and then I went, I'm going to put a bra and a shirt on so, to be a professional <laughs> since I'm not putting on any makeup for y'all. Her milk cartons bring all the deaths to the yard. Danielle, oh, no. please stop. <laughs> Katie, tell us some of your favorite thrillers. Okay, hi. Hey, my name is Katie, Katie Colson, because we're not creative. We don't make 
cute usernames. Um, let's see. Got a couple here. Got a lot to choose from. Tinder's the flesh. I'm a sicko and I'm not here to apologize for it. Bunny, nobody's surprised. Hello. I'm literally obsessed. Okay. The push, one of the best debuts I've ever read. Literally obsessed. And my absolute favorite, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Sleep Vampires. This is so mm, obsessed. I need a reread it then. I need to reread that one because I was okay with it when I first read it, but I well, never it's, it's, you know, it's probably a southern thing. It might be a southern yeah. thing because this is like the women in this book. I'm like, I know these. Like these women are like, I've met them. <laughs> this is a real thing. Um, I would say I read mainly like thrillers and horrors like right now because I feel like every year I like read a different genre, but that's kind of the the vibes as per 2022 yeah yikes <laughs> and i would say so i thought about this one time and then didn't stop to think about like how valid the summary was going to be or whether it was on point so we're just going to say it so what i what i said is it 10 words i said Teacher turns vigilante and provides questionable AIDS content, also murder. <laughs> That's the one. I love that. That was great. It's interesting hearing your summaries and also not knowing your ratings. Like, I don't actually know oh, what yeah. anybody thought of this book yet. Um, I have shared my rating. I don't know if anybody watched my um, wrap up, but I have shared that already. Um, I gave it five stars. Mm -hmm. It's, it's one of my just favorite things. Um, I see the comments are really on my side here. Uh, this is definitely my favorite book club pick of the year so far. Um, Yay. And that's because I, of us, really. Not because of, course. of us. No. Naturally. Oh, of course. The, the, world, the world knew we needed a stunner. Um, this was oh. the best book club, like, across the, the board. Every book club that I've, like, been a part of this month has been phenomenal, like, choices. Amazing. So happy to hear it. Um, there's definitely, I see some three stars, but it doesn't seem like a lot of people like hated it, which is just such good vibes. Um, oh, also, I thought I would mention, since we're talking about merch, I just posted a video this morning and I have summer merch. So bright colors um, to match hide, some bright colors to match um, the house across the lake. And I just announced the August selection, which is what moves the dead. And we have some pink merch. So if you want to check out that video, and shop and pink? there's also mugs. Pink. Pink. Pink, baby. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, what was my question? Was we were we just gonna get into ratings? I think um I, I think I, I saw a DNF. I saw a DNF. I don't want to know. That DNF. Oh no. Okay, I'm also, ready to hear did, your ratings, I think. Did people have access to the audiobook? Because I physically read it and then I was in the audiobook, but so many people on my Discord were saying that that they didn't have access to the audiobook, And I was like, is that like a thing? Oh, that was actually going to be my question. How did you read the book? So I gave it five stars and I did a tandem read. I would say I listened mostly to the audiobook and I really enjoyed it. But then the times that I was reading it physically, I equally enjoyed it. I loved how long the chapters were. Um, I loved everything about it. So how did you read it? And what did you rate it? I, I read, read it physically, physically like 75%. And then when I was driving, I would like listen to it. But then I, I listened to it. Um, so... I would say like 75% physically. F this fiscally. 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 <laughs> um, I did I did physically and I gave it five stars because any book that makes me physically react in the way that this did, like I had to pick my jaw off the floor at certain points. Like especially like no spoilers, end of first chapter and like the end of the book. I was just like, okay, because I adore anything that's like revenge related so i just i love that but i did just 100 percent physical and i had my pen out and everything i was like i'm, <laughs> I'm making notes i make notes highlights everything yeah I, the first chapter really got me and it really set me up for just a good time it felt like a short story like i felt like it could have ended after that first chapter and that could have just been an experience on its own because then you're left with all of these thoughts of like you can come up with what's happened after the fact. Um, okay, I think we're gonna get into spoilers because like what I wanna do is I actually wanna go through every single chapter of this mm -hmm. because this book is made up of six chapters. 
Um, and each one has a very intentional like goal and different perspective, which I also wasn't expecting. I had no idea this was from like five different perspectives um, or six, I don't, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, after that first chapter, we're reading from the teacher's perspective. So as people leave, I'm gonna slowly get into spoilers. Um, we have the teacher's perspective and she's giving a lecture to her students. And we find it at the end of the first chapter, um, what her revenge plot is. And then after that, we switch to another POV um, from one of the students. And I, I, was, I was not expecting that, so. Um, okay, so I think everybody should probably have left. Well, I, at the first time spoiled. I read it, I gave it four and a half stars, and then I gave it five stars the second time I read it. The first time I gave it four and a half stars, because when I physically read it, I did think that some of the perspectives were not as interesting as other perspectives. But then the second time I read it, I was like, no, this has been, this has been awful. And I couldn't stop. Yeah. I literally went to work and I was like, you're never going to read it. Shut up. I'm going to tell you everything that happens. And I was just telling, they're like, well, it sounds good. I'm like, I don't care. I need to tell you what happens this one. <laughs> Yeah, I, there were definitely some perspectives that were a bit repetitive, mm -hmm. but um, here's the thing though. We are people who read 20 books in a month mm -hmm. and a normal person might take four months to read this book. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's a normal reading experience. So the fact that some chapters do repeat themselves and we find out like the same scene three times from three different perspectives, I actually think that's a good thing kind of like when you get a recap of a show mm -hmm. and like you always skip the recap because we're yeah. we're marathoning tv shows but people who don't marathon tv shows they need that recap so i do agree it was a bit repetitive but i think if i had not read it in one day i would have appreciated that well i think it wasn't like the first time i read it the, i didn't realize that not necessarily repetition but like certain characters i didn't realize were going to be interesting so when I was reading for them, I was like, True. I don't want to read for them. I want to go back to this other person. And then at the end of the chapter, I was like, <laughs> never mind. I was like that with chapter two. Um, obviously, we'll talk about chapter one and everything first. But I feel like out of all the chapters, chapter two, I was like, we've just had such a phenomenal first chapter, phenomenal POV. I want to know more about her and the teacher and everything. I want, mm -hmm. want to know what happened next. And we do kind of get its insight into what happens next. But I felt like chapter two was a bit of a, it went into a bit of a lull. And I just did want to read from somebody else who I thought would be more interesting. And then it turns out she was more interesting in someone else's POV chapter. So I felt like I couldn't take any chapter for granted because of that. Um, there was just always something that was propelling the plot forward in each one. And I just, I love it when a book can do that to me. Okay, so let's go through um, okay, chapter one. What happened in chapter one? We had a uh, chapter called The Saint. We had the teacher Mor Moraguchi. Um, and she has a daughter named Monami. And we find out in the first chapter, like everything that happens, um, that she knows there are two students in the class who have killed her daughter. Um, I don't think that was like, I, I thought that I knew more than I was supposed to going into the book. Mm -hmm. So like, cause people were like, go into it knowing nothing. And I went into the book knowing that her daughter was dead. And I thought that that was gonna ruin the book for me because I thought I had found out something I wasn't supposed to know. But it, like, it really doesn't matter if you go into it knowing the daughter's dead because you have no idea like the series of events. Um, so she basically talks about how two people have killed her daughter and now she's on a revenge mission. Um, so were you shocked by, um, <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Were you shocked by the fact that her idea of revenge was to put HIV in the milk of the children Yes. Oh, <laughs> no, and the way she revealed it, no, it was even oh. better than that. That was shocking. What was better than that is how she reveals it. Cause it wasn't just like, you got AIDS. It was like, it was like, oh, why are you so afraid that like, that was my favorite part was that she was like, oh, I told you that two of you are murderers and you are like, oh, but when I told you that my husband has AIDS, you're, you're like, like, yeah, they all oh, tied together. God. It was very like, yeah, secular in that moment. And I think what was great about it was not because you gave that, um, that mic drop moment. It was like the build up to it. It was very slow building. Like it's 50 pages, 54 pages of the first chapter. And you get like, all it is is talk, but then you get certain moments where she's like, okay, don't, don't cry girls. That's a good memory. And like, you know, I just talking about her daughter and there are some kids crying and you get this like tension, this like sense of like, what is she actually doing? Because I had no idea what her revenge was going to be. I did just know that her daughter died. I did know she wanted revenge, but I was like, 
but like how's she going to do it like my mind did go to like a certain place like oh it's probably going to be this because it's at the school and this is what usually happens and like this kind of thing and it turned out to be totally the opposite so I feel like I just wasn't expecting that and yeah I love revenge things and when it can really hit you like out of like left field it just it does something even more to it it feels more impactful because we had that soul build up but yeah that that moment about her husband and oh well, it yeah, was that is so chilling. true. She linked everything together because when I was reading the first mm-hmm. chapter, I was like, we've been talking about milk for a, like mm-hmm. way too yeah. long. And then I was like, but it's still good. Like, so I still right. was loving it. And then whenever it got to like, why that they were talking, oh my God, I was like blown away. And that's what I loved is that it was like definitely very psychological because she's like, oh, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to call the police because I don't have faith that any of those things are going to get justice. So, I'm going to get justice by ruining your life. Yes. And do you feel like maybe, um, it, I mean, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but it turns out that the HIV wasn't put into the milk in the end anyway. So like, do you not, like, I felt like it didn't matter because at that point I was like, they've ruined themselves. Like just the thought and the idea of it mm-hmm. because they were so scared of it. What they've done after that, it's like, um, Marikuchi, she, um, gave them the tools of their destruction. She was like, you choose what you do with this. And they chose so poorly because they were terrified. And honestly, if I was in their position, I don't know what I would do. I feel like, I mean, I don't know. I, I know what I would do. I wouldn't kill my mother. Oh my God. Like there's so many things that happen <laughs> later on. I like, just like, would you seriously do that just because you're scared of HIV? Some of it well, did come across as a little unbelievable, but. Well, uh, but I really actually thought, because a lot of people, which I totally understand, but when you're first reading the book and you hear about like HIV, I get like people putting the book down or, or whatever. Like I understand that. And when people talk about like the questionable validity of those things mm-hmm. makes total sense. But what I liked and I tabbed it, I remember where it was, but later on, I want to say it's, I don't know if it's the last chapter or what, but later on when she says that she knows that the likelihood that they would ever get HIV from that was so like literally was non-existent. And, but she knew they didn't know that. And mm-hmm. I was like, that was smart. Cause she's like, I didn't, I didn't think I gave you HIV. I just wanted you to think I did. And I was like, mm. oh, honestly, that, that's what makes it brilliant, I think. Because it, it she, like, when I think about it and um, the cards that are dealt in this book and all of the choices that they make, it just all stems from, like, all of their own choices. And I feel like that's like, was like, yeah, a psychological torture. Is this like, what would you class this as? Like, a psycho, I don't know what to class this as. I wouldn't say it was like thriller, thriller. It's like psychological. Like, is this, what is this <laughs> yeah it's like it's it's a psychological torment story i wouldn't put it in the mystery yeah. category i wouldn't put it in the thriller category i would just call it like a psychological revenge tale mm-hmm. um, yeah which makes That's it not exactly the right pick for my mystery thriller book club but i'm glad we had a good time anyway um mm. i think that the um I obviously can't speak on any type of like representation. And I think that people can feel however they want to feel about the book and they are in their right for that. Um, I do think it, it goes to show how there's so much mis- misinformation about things like HIV. Um, I think it's probably pretty realistic for its time for the way that people understand HIV to be, even like the teacher was having those conversations about how, um, how it's transmitted and stuff. And then we technically like the man who's infected with HIV um, or lives with HIV. I don't know the right terminology that people feel comfortable with, um, but he's kind of the hero of the story in a sense. Um, mm-hmm. So there is that because he's the one who stops her from putting it in the milk. He feels her taking his blood. And I know we're getting way <laughs> further into the book, um, but I, I did think that that was like a, a good aspect of the book to have that um, and to have the conversations about how, you know, it didn't yeah, turn into the type of story where he, because there's a scene with um, one of the boys putting blood places, and it didn't turn mm. into some type of like mass hysteria type of story, which it could have. Yeah. So the person who had HIV, actually had HIV, was one who saved the kids, really. So yeah, I find that so interesting. But I also found it so unbelievable. Again, this is jumping forward, like unbelievable that he would see her, like she would take the blood, he would see her, follow her to the school get them out, like take the milk. Yeah, I just, I, I couldn't wrap my head around that, but no, I'm glad must, it happened. He, must, he knew, he knew her. He was like, yeah. she is capable of some crazy <laughs> shit. Like I was like, she's got, I mean, she was so like coldly intelligent, but she was like a warm person, 
But like, if you have, like, if she had had another kid, then this would never have happened. Like, she would have had to have not been breaking laws all over the place. But she's a vigilante. Her husband's dying. Um, her kid was murdered. She's like, I can do whatever I want. I I can do whatever I want. Let's go. And I'm like, I did think it was interesting because the husband, the husband was such a good person too because there was the whole like when she finds out that like, sorry, one second. One second. Hopefully this has been telling me I don't need to come in. That would be so great. Holy <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah, yeah I I love a I really love a book that is ridiculous. Like you all at this mm. point in the book club know my taste. I don't care about anything being realistic. I don't care about like people talk about how they have to suspend disbelief. Please let me suspend disbelief. Like I love it. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take me totally out of the story where I just cannot follow along anymore and it's like glaringly obvious. Like, yeah, I, I guess he could like do it, like, and he does it, but oh, Katie, I got the afternoon off. Wait, you don't have to go to work? Ah! I literally was like, I was like, she, my, okay, this is, they know, they know. <laughs> Sorry, my heart's beating so fast. I'm so happy. They, they called and I answered it and she goes, Katie, how about you start a new book tonight? And I was like, are you watching me online right now? Like, the fuck? They know because I, I keep books in my apron, which we're not allowed to do, but. We might have to do a uh, reading sprint <laughs> later. When you were like, oh, you've never been here before. I was like, I feel like I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's get into chapter two. Chapter two is called The Martyr. It's from um, a character named Mu Mizaki or Mizuho, depending on who's talking to her. Um, and she is the class president in the, uh, it's interesting because this is also translated into a bunch of different languages. So I know that in other um, languages, things are changed to be more appropriate for that um, like country. So for, for us, it was called the class president, but in other countries, they're called like the class representative or the class, like something else to be more, you know, relatable. Um, so we have her and what happened in her chapter? I thought, you know what, until you said her, I had no idea that it was a girl. Really? Even when she was kissing Shuya and all that? Well, no, no, like, but I completely forgot. Because I, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? That was a girl? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I will say that it was the chapter that I only put one tab on mm -hmm. because it was, like, just info dumpy. But, I mean, it was still fantastic, but it was just, like, a character that didn't actually, like, well, she was inadvertently um, responsible for some things that happened, but it was just like her writing a letter at, to the teacher saying like, this is what happened after you left. But but wasn't she also the one that in this chapter, like she tells him, like laughs at him and that's what ends up causing like, is that not her? That Yeah, 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 it, it is because she basically, I think this whole chapter was kind of um, a commentary on like peer pressure is what it ended up being because we basically, I, I know there's some people here who didn't read the book. So I'm trying so hard to like really talk about everything so you can act like, you can feel like you read the book. So we have the two boys, we find out in this chapter who they are, they're Nyoki and Shuya. And they are the ones who are responsible for killing the four-year-old girl. Um, and then our class president is like kind of friends with both of them, is kind of involved with both of them in different ways. And we find out that in her chapter. Um, and then we have a new teacher named Werther. And oh, he God. is going to one of the boys' houses because one of the boys has come back to school. This is all the things we learn in her chapter. One of the boys has come back to school um, and is being bullied because like everybody knows that he is responsible um and i think they also don't want to go near him because they know he drank the milk and they don't want to be around him um and then one of the boys never came back to school so they're now in eighth grade um and he's just at home and he won't come to school and so the teacher and the class president go to like visit him um give him his schoolwork and that type of stuff so i think it um the main scene was like they were throwing milk on him or I think she threw milk on him in that chapter um, to prove that like she didn't like him and didn't want to be friends with him. Oh and yeah, because people were going to turn on her. But that was really interesting too, how they didn't do anything. Like the kids like did, well, cause Shuya, or um, not Shuya. Uh, oh my God. The other Nyoki? Kid, 
Naoki, he was Naoki. the one who didn't come back to school. And it was like, he incriminated himself, even though mm -hmm. nobody would have expected him. And then Shuya incriminated himself by being deviant. Like he, everybody knew he, there was something weird about him. So it was like, he incriminated himself and then they weren't going to do anything. They were like scared. They didn't want to bring it up. And then it was like, kind of like, the straw that like broke the camel's back where it was like one kid did like i think it was like that's how it started was that whenever she was talking to him they were like oh like so you you are okay with that and then it like cycled into like bullying and all this stuff where like because when the teacher i mean later obviously is like oh i wanted this to get started faster and it wasn't happening like i thought that they were going to start bullying him sooner and she was like oh it took longer than she thought I thought that was interesting, but remind me, the girl, the um, class president, is she, is she the one that has a crush on um, has a crush on Shuya, and he has a crush on her, and then she laughs at him, and he kills her? Is that the girl, or is that different? That's okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I totally agree with that. Um, I think what was really good about this chapter, and I did say before that this was probably like to me one of the least like one of my least favorite chapters it was more to do with like the moral of what the teacher did and kind of like questioning um not just what she did but what the students are doing to Shuya. yeah like do you feel sympathy for the killer like because he at the time everyone knew like he killed the little girl but like obviously she saw something in him and she was like what they're doing to him is awful and he's and is wrong um so she questions it and i think that's why she's responding to the teacher like look at what you've done this is what's happened after um, so I don't know if maybe like that was maybe the purpose of her chapter was not just to um, give some insight into what happened after, but like to make us think is is what the teacher did actually right? Like what what yeah like because there's a moment where she says the people who are hurt more should have the right to judge the ones who hurt them the way you did with Naoki and Shuya, and you'd only need a trial when no one was left behind. And it's kind of like this question of like um, you're you're the person who was directly hurt by these two kids. Um, so you should be the one to punish them, but everyone else is being punished because of it. Um, and I just feel like that was like a bit of an interesting angle well, of her chapter. That's interesting because I, now that you say that, that makes so much sense, especially for like a book club conversation is like, I, when you're saying that, I was like, oh, wow, I felt like the opposite. And I was like, I didn't even think about there being different perspectives. Cause when I started the chapter, I thought that she was writing the teacher to be like, let me tell you, like, you deserve to know that what you did worked. And like, mm -hmm. let me tell you what happened. That's what I was perceiving it as. Like, she was like, oh, you missed it. Let me tell you what happened. Not like her being like, you ruined these people's lives. <laughs> like, yeah, you got them, girl. Like, that's what I thought. But. That was, yeah. No, honestly. And, and I, yeah, I think um, there's just such a, like a, a dry way that she does it. Um, especially since she does end up revealing that Naoki kills his mother, which I thought was like such a shocking moment in this chapter because I was like, well, why? Like, why did she, why did he do that? Um, so yeah, I just found her chapter to be one of the least interesting in my opinion, but also when it's all like, like deeper, like rather than on the surface level, it just felt a little bit more impactful and to do with like emotion and in what followed, if you know what I mean. Well, what did you think when you read, like, cause that's the only tab I put was the, um, was Naoki, that night Naoki killed his mother. What did you mm. think? Obviously you only had like two pages to like really digest it, but like, what did you think when you read that? Like, did you think that you're like, oh, well he, there is evil in him like after all, or did you think like, oh, he was like driven to that? Like, what was your like reaction? Cause my reaction was definitely confusion and like, mm. oh, he was, um, he, he was, became the monster that people labeled him as like you know you speak it into being uh I see i didn't think of that either sorry I, I was just confused as well i was like what like it was one of those <laughs> like at the end of chapter one i was just like how many more shocking things are going to happen in this book that's all i could think of it's just shocking yeah that was jaw drop number two big one yeah i i think i assumed that she um and then we're led to believe in the next chapter which is my favorite chapter um that she was gonna like turn him in and I assume that's why he killed her is because he she found out what happened and he had to kill her to keep his secret. That's, I, I think, what I assumed in that moment. Oh, my God. I did not think. See, this is so interesting. I did not think that. I thought 
he killed her because she was so smothering. Mm. Which is, that's, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> but she was frustrated. Her, Werther was the worst character. Oh, I fucking hated him. But so interesting how everybody has such a different perspective on this teacher. But the mom, I also, like, I totally understand, like, Naoki's mom. I totally get it. But she was so frustrated. I get why she did everything she did. I'm sure I would do the same thing. But, oh, it was so frustrating. Like, when she finds out what, and she's just like, well, it's not your fault. Yeah, so chapter three is called The Benevolent One. And it's from Noki's um, sister's perspective, which I also wasn't expecting. I was like, why are we reading from somebody who wasn't there? Like, and she didn't even live with him. So I was like, what is about to happen? And so then what happens in that chapter is she finds her mother's diary after she's been murdered um, by Noki. And we read all of her, am I thinking about the right person? That's Noki, right? Not Shuya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there, I think I, I was listening to the audiobook so quickly too at some point. I was like, don't mix these two people up. And then I did it anyway. Um, she is writing this diary and she finds out the truth about what happened. So what actually happened is, um, so one of the boys created this device that is supposed to shock people and he wants to try it out on somebody. So he ropes in this other boy and they decide to do it to this four-year-old girl and see if this shocking device works. Um, and it does, but then it ends up killing her, or at least that's what we think at the beginning of the book. Then we find out um, that she actually drowned and we're questioning like, how did that even happen? Um, it was obviously an accident because one of the boys was trying to cover it up. So he just threw her in the pool. Um, but then we find out she drowned. And then we find out in this chapter that he intentionally, knowing that she was still alive after the shock, threw her in the pool. Okay, well, well, do you think, so there's so many twists with the death of the little girl, but do you think that, um, okay, so two different things of what do you think was actually being said, and I liked that the author didn't tell you because it's, you're just like have to kind of um, assume whatever you're going to assume, but I think, like personally, that, okay, so the Shuya, he knew she wasn't dead. He knew she wasn't dead because he knew that that was not strong enough to kill someone. So he knew that she was only passed out. Like that's what, I'm pretty sure it says that in the book, but like he would have known that. But I don't think, I don't think that he thought that um, Naoki was going to throw in the pool. I think he just wanted to scare somebody and get like a reaction. And that, and that he was just going to go tell everybody like, oh yeah, he killed her. And that then she was actually going to be alive. I don't think he thought that she was going to kill her. I mean, that's up for contention, obviously, but I, I, I think, I think he thought she was dead. I think he thought it was going to kill her and he wanted to, he just, he needed attention because his whole thing was that his, his mom, you know, had like abandoned him and abused him. And he just wanted her attention. He wanted media attention. And I, no, I don't know. The, the, the teacher says later on, oh, the one who didn't kill her or the one that the one that had like she says something later on about like the bad seed who didn't kill her and then the good seed who did kill her. But I think that the teacher I, you'll have to tell me like you'll have to tell me in the comments you probably remember more than me. But I was like, I feel like she says something about like that he's the one who created it and he knew it wasn't strong enough to kill somebody. But I, yeah, I she, made that up. No, she definitely knew, like the teacher knew. I think Shuya definitely did want to kill her because okay. because of his mom. Yeah, like he uh, wanted her to notice him. And I think that's why he, he did it because he wanted that. And then that was why Naoki in the next chapter was so, I think that's probably why he turned so bad because he wanted to, do something that Shuya couldn't do and that was kill the girl and that's why he like mm -hmm. held it over him and like felt this kind of mad power trip and mm -hmm. you kind of get this sense of that from this chapter and what I love about this chapter is because I love when it mixes up its format and it's like mixed media like quite a bit and have the diary entries was just so interesting it almost felt like um watching this downward spiral of this this young boy and also seeing like how much his mother was 
like a contributing factor to that because of what she was letting and allowing him to do. Um, but what there was, was that. that? Yeah, all right. Oh, this is another reason why I thought this was a bit um, unbelievable was because the father was there the entire time, but like just didn't notice. And I was like, what? Like, how could you not notice? It's been like ages. What? Well, I so, feel yeah. like, I mean, that kind like kind of makes sense because like that is a, I mean, mm. nowadays probably moving past that, but like that is a thing where like dads are like, oh, well, mom takes care of you. I'm going to go to work you talk to your mother like i'm not i'm not part of that you're crying I, I, oh don't talk to your mom like you know like doesn't man <laughs> just expect her to deal with it but i think that also the reason why i was thinking like oh well he doesn't think that sh she's actually dead is because of the way he reacts when naoki's like oh like like she's dead or something and then he like screams like yeah tell everyone and i'm like Okay, I mean, I get that they're like in middle school, but I'm like, what do you mean tell everybody she's dead? Like, you're gonna, that's, that's all, that's like, all, that's three steps over the line. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, that was not. I think, okay, jaw drop number three or four, whatever we're on, is like when we find out that his mom decides to kill him. Yes. Because oh. I did not see that coming. She was like, okay, well, I, I understand my child has done this thing. He did it intentionally. Now I have to kill him and myself. I was like, I'm sorry. What? Well, that, the diary just like, uh, mm -mm. what you were saying about uh, a descent into like madness of like the boy, I felt like it was a descent into madness for the mom because mm. he, like, in, in my opinion, Naoki was already long past redeeming himself in his own mind like he was too soft he was too soft of a person to come back from that he could not yeah. live with himself and it was just going to he was going to end up dying but probably he was too weak to kill himself but he was going to just let himself go until something happened and the mom falling into dissent of like not only did her son do this and she's not capable of turning him in and she's like, I like, kind of almost feels like she did this and is like, okay, well, I'm going to do him the like mercy of doing it myself. Or like, we'll both go out together because she can't, <sighs> your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore him. It's all about me. It's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I agree with that and um, what I love about this book with the pacing is because what we well all we knew beforehand was that he killed his mum but we had no idea that she wanted to kill him first so at this point I'm like well how does it actually happen and mm -hmm. that's why I love that why the next chapter is from his perspective so I feel like the way that these chapters have been placed in sprinkling of all these details like throughout them it just every single time when we get one of these jaw dropping moments we're like well like what, what happens next? Like, how, how does that happen? Like, what are the consequences of that action? And yeah, I, I feel like with uh, this chapter, because we got that a couple of those bombshells, um, it led so nicely into the next chapter, which uh, I will let Kayla <laughs> recap for everyone. <laughs> I, com I completely agree. And speaking of the chapters, I thought it was so uh, such a good choice that um, a normal author would put the person whose perspective we're in at the top of the chapter. It would say chapter two, Noki. She didn't mm. do that. And so you're actually like a couple paragraphs in mm -hmm. sometimes before you even know what perspective you're from. And I think that was really fun because otherwise I would have been like, okay, so we're reading from Shuya. When do we get to read from this person? But instead mm -hmm. you're just lost and you have no idea what's about to happen. And that just adds so much tension and you don't know yes. when it's happening because they, mm -hmm. it's all interspersed. Or you kind of start at the beginning or start back then and then go through. Because wasn't the Seeker Naoki's point of yeah, view? Yeah, the Seeker was Naoki's. Um, I didn't jot down a lot for this one because I feel like we didn't learn a lot. It was more so just like recapping stuff that happened, but from obviously like the killer's perspective. Um, but in this one, the thing that's interesting is getting to read why he killed his mother and what happened because... I think, I guess what I would assume is that she went to kill him and he retaliated and murdered her. Um, but what's like really happening is he is not in his right mind because he's so like drowning in 
I don't know if it's grief or like what it is, but she basically goes into his room and cuts his hair in his sleep and wants to get him to bathe and take care of himself because she sees him just as this, like he's falling apart clearly. Um, and she's trying to help him and she loves him so much and is caring for him and is just really there for him. And then he wakes up and all his hair is on his pillow and he thinks he's dying or he's dead and he's a ghost and he like freaks out and ends up killing her kind of by accident or like just like doesn't realize what's going on. Well, um, I find also- that he, Naoki, was interesting to me in like terms of how he dealt with like his feelings because somebody had said in the comments, but I forgot about that, about the mom like always treating him like he was the perfect son. Like the daughter, cool, got mm-hmm. it. You're doing your thing. That's great. Oh, you're pregnant? Love it for you. But the son, she was like, he's perfect. He's everything. And how Naoki, like, even though he was like soft, like, in, you know, like mentally or, you know, but in school, he was like always trying to be like number one. And then like whenever he kills her, the reason he fr- like loses it is because she keeps saying, I'm sorry, I failed you and saying like, I made you this way. I failed you. And then he freaks out and is like, I'm not a failure. I did not fail. And he blacks out and kills her. <laughs> and I was like that. Like, he literally blacks out. It goes from, like, I'm not a failure. And then he's like, why is there so much blood? Did I just stab her? Like, what happened? And I'm like, that's crazy that, like, this kid who's, like, so, like, kind of, like, soft when it comes to, like, not being able to stand up for himself is, like, no, I'm not a failure. I did. Like, he was always trying to, like, be better than Shuya. Mm -hmm. It's sinister is probably the word. Like, this uh, chapter just progressively got more sinister because I did think oh we're just again just getting the same kind of perspective we got from the previous chapter but we're kind of saying that yeah from his side we're seeing him kind of like his mental state you know following the milk incident and you know that was all interesting and fine and well and stuff um but I feel like a lot of the stuff that we got yeah we kind of already knew um but it was I did want to know more about the mum and how he killed her um but it was just interesting to know like how he was just so adamant at yeah one upping Shuya. He says like I was succeeding where he had failed. And I'm just like, are you really succeeding? Because I just it doesn't look like you are right now. Like this is the <laughs> very big hole you've dug here. So um yeah I feel like it it was a fine and in fact I probably didn't like this chapter as much as chapter two. No well, more this made sense. It. This chapter like made sense in terms of like I mean if you go into it thinking like you know if it says it's a horror if it says it's a thriller reading the chapter, like the first time I read it, I gave it four and a half stars because I was like, okay, this was kind of slow, you know, whatever. But then when I realized after I read it that I was like, this is a psychological drama, I was like, that made way more sense when I was reading like Naoki's chapter where I was like, oh, we're getting all of this information so that we understand why he did it, what was going on. We're like in the head of somebody that we could not understand. And I'm like, that was interesting. Instead of it being like, Oh yeah, he killed his mom. Next thing, it was like, but let's talk about that. He killed his mother. <laughs> she was gonna kill me, him though. <laughs> it made me so excited for the next chapter, though, like to finally get from Shuya, who was supposed to be the mastermind behind it all and supposed to be the horrible one, like the the, the most evil one of the two. Um, it just made me that more excited to finally get from his perspective. Yeah, were you expecting to hear from Shuya last? And what did you think was going to happen in his chapter? Because I definitely just thought it was going to be a recap of everything that happened and his reasoning. Yes. Same. I thought it was going to be from the teacher's point of view, which technically mm. we got. But I thought it was going to be the teacher because I'm like, we can't end without hearing something from this girl. I, I, I did think that we would get you yeah, at some point. I did feel like we had to, but... Yeah, I wasn't sure like how, but the fact that we pretty much started the chapter with what, Last Will and Testament, I was like, wait, what's going on? And then I planted a bottom at school today, and I was just like, the conf- you know what, it was at this point I realized that confessions meant that the characters were actually confessing quite a lot, and they were confessing through these like incredible, like outrageous and dramatic um, ways, and I was like, I-, I don't know if I can take this anymore. By this point, I was on the floor, and I, I-, I-, I don't think I could I could have read um anymore but honestly it just it was so interesting and i'm just i'm so glad this was the final chapter because it was a circular thing because i feel like when we started the book um it was the teacher and we felt this kind of almost um what's the word uh i i feel like i for sure yeah i felt was going to be the one who was like 
the one I would hate the most because he was the one who led this whole thing and he was the mastermind mind behind it all. And he, he still was, um, but he actually wasn't one who killed it. But the fact that we had that circular moment where really the last two characters standing in this book are the teacher and Shuya. And I felt like there was no better or more poetic way of doing that. Um, so I just found that like really interesting. I, I honestly, I just, oh, I, I love how traumatic it is. Well, I liked like that the way that the characters like, even though I was like, they should have been a little bit older. Like I felt like I was like eighth grade in the end. Like I mean, if they started in eighth grade, but I'm like, that's that's he's creating these like little shocking. Like I was like, I was, like you're pushing a little bit, but um, I like that he is very intelligent. Like Shuya is very intelligent, and then in his confession, I really like whenever I can't. Was, he's like writing his last will and testament but he's like kind of writing it to the teacher almost where he's like oh he says like okay he says um it seemed i had been under maraguchi's spell the whole time i'd been living in a fantasy of my own devising and he says like she knew like why or he's like saying like why did she go through all this trouble what it was just to psychologically torture us and that she he's like says that he doesn't know if she thought that Naoki would kill, like would kill someone or kill himself. But if she did, like she did a damn good job. And I was like, he's almost like, one up on you. Okay. Teacher one, Shuya zero. Like he was like <laughs> kind of respecting her. Like she crushed it. I love, I love what, uh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, I love what Lindsay said about how it starts with a mother wanting a child to love and ends with a child wanting a loving mother. Like that, oh, I feel like is is such a, like an undercurrent like of a theme for this book and probably one of the reasons why I just find it so devious and so sinister all this revenge and um I I, I just I yeah and also the fact that they are so young like Katie said but some children are evil in this world and I feel mm -hmm. like and she definitely what else would she well could she have possibly done and I feel like she did something that again if we can talk about the bomb for a second at the very end, when she has made him be the one to set it off, like he was the one who presses the button, she moved it, but he's the one who literally kills his own mum because of what, again, like it, it was his action. I'm just like, how can it just be so perfectly circular again? Like, I, it just blew my mind. Well, I, I feel like confessions, like naming it that was perfect because all of the characters do fucked up things like all of them do mm -hmm. messed up stuff but you have like you have your like three main characters but you have like shuya who it was like nature versus nurture or whatever but he was already psychologically messed up like from before the book began he was like had i guess like well i don't know what to call it but like a psychological issues you know like he already had them and then um the teacher it was like she kind of broke but then she wasn't like doing this to everyone like shuya didn't care about anybody but his mom but the teacher was like i'm gonna ruin your life because like you broke me like mentally but she didn't do that to anybody else like she still had compassion for everyone else but then you got naoki over here and that was like he broke mentally and wasn't trying to hurt other people but was hurting himself so it was this crazy like look at each way someone could be affected by something like this and the t the bomb <laughs> I did not see it coming at all. I was so sh like shocked. I just, I, I like, I knew the book was already nuts, but when he goes, I put a bomb at the school. I was like, oh, what are you talking about? And then we do get his, um, like his reasoning for everything, why he wanted revenge, like what he wanted to do. Um, we get the whole history of his mom. And then I think also in this chapter, we get to learn his real like intent with pulling the other boy into it and that he was pretending to be his friend, mm -hmm. um, that he just wanted, you know, what he wanted and he wanted his mom's attention. And then, and then, yeah, she, and then there's a little chapter at the end, chapter six is the evangelist. And that's just where the teacher talks about like the truth about everything. I think this is when we mm -hmm. learn that her husband found out that he was, she was taking his blood, um, saved the whole day there, um, and that she was manipulating the other teacher. So that was part of the psychological torment 
was that that new teacher was constantly visiting Shuna or Noki. Um, and She's brilliant. Brilliant. and it was almost like, like bothering him constantly. And she knew that that would mess him up. And it did. And then we find out that she put the bomb at his mom's place of work and he set it off and killed his own mother. Like how, I just can't believe all of this happened and that I, I didn't see any of it coming. Every, oh, I've, no. never, I've never read a book like this where I don't predict a single thing. And I just think that's the most impressive part about this and why it was the biggest five star for me. This even first line of wild. this chapter is the most savage thing I've ever read. Shuya, it's mama. It's not what you were expecting, was it? <laughs> oh, no, I know. I read that, too, and I was like, her, his mom. And then it was like, no, just kidding. I'm your teacher. And I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. She's dead. Like, <laughs> psych. But I'm like, I think that they, I'm like, I was trying to remember. I'm like, I think that they already knew about the age not being in the milk before that because, or maybe he figured it out because Shuya says in the last chapter that he finds out he was like, he says, he's writing to her about her saying like, oh, I don't know if you could have predicted how disappointed I was when I found out I didn't have AIDS. Because he yeah, like, I, you I, couldn't pull it off. I have that. It's, yeah, he says in the end, she hadn't turned us in or given us AIDS. What did her revenge amount to? Yeah, like he knew. He knew. And I'm just like, but the revenge was that you were all essentially killing yourselves and ruining your own lives and i'm just like when does this revenge like circle of revenge end because after this after this what's he going to do next you know like this is what i'm like what is, is he going to go after her like i, I, I and just, she doesn't turn his ass in she's like well your mom said and she literally is like i think i've had my fill of revenge yeah i'm gonna go have a cold like, glass of milk okay good on you she's probably like, sitting there with a glass of wine like yeah i'm done i'm done well because she, she's not gonna turn him in and she's not gonna kill him she's like i want you to live Ooh. with this Mm -hmm. for the rest of your life and also in my opinion she doesn't have to do any of that she doesn't have to turn him in she doesn't have to do anything because he will do it again he will get caught when he's an adult and will get tried it as an adult but that was so interesting when they talked about like how people can get a, like how the law kind of lets things fall through the cracks and how things will like oh you'll just go to a juvenile like detention center for like six months or whatever and i'm like yeah and when she's talking about like the other cases where things like this have happened and that kids have like found out certain ages like if you're under 14 or it was like if you were under 14 and then they change it to if you're under 12 or something like that because one girl the lunacy girl was 14 and was like better do it before i turn 15. Eh. that's why i think I the, age, about her. the age is just so interesting in here like i loved the age range i don't typically love reading from this age of of kids um, but I think the age was like the right age to make them because there's this certain like arrogance that um, you can do anything and you can get away with anything. But there's also just like this lack of like maturity, obviously, in understanding like what you're doing, because like he wrote all of his plans on his blog, like someone's going to find out and someone's going to stop you. And they did like, how can yeah. you be so stupid? Blogging as a middle schooler. That was so <laughs> accurate. I was like, yeah, he do be doing that. But it's it was so great. Like literally the, also something about their age that was perfect. The only reason their age, like kind of, I was like, what was because I was like, how's he so technologically savvy? But I'm like, I guess it wasn't technologically savvy. It was just like, it probably wasn't that great. Like what he created, but whatever but i love that she mentions later on like that um the reason why she did what she did like the way she did what she did to him when she's on the phone with him is that she's like oh um adults are pre predisposed to think of children as innocent and to protect them even if they've done something wrong so i could not assume that adults were going to to do anything to you but kids are vicious and they're your peers and they will tear you apart. And I was like, that is so true. Yes. There's no justice when it's kids. Like when it's adults, it, they, there's a very definite place that they will go for, for kids. They're so unpredictable. And I feel like that was, cause she does meet um, his, his, not his mom, um, the, the guy who actually killed her, Neoki. Um, she does meet his mom and she says, look, I'm not, as a parent, I want to kill him, but as a teacher, I have to protect him. Like she says that to like his mom, like so directly. 
And, but I feel like even then in that moment, she knew, like, she's already like set the wheel in motion in her head. Like, I'm already got plans and I, I'm, I'm about to destroy you. Like, it doesn't matter what I say in this moment. It doesn't matter if I take out my revenge. So like, if I killed you right here and right now, it wouldn't be satisfying to her. She needed the prolonged trauma and um, like torture of these kids. And she knows, she knows that they would get away with it if she went the right way about it. So she had to, mm-hmm. she had to fight dirty. Well, and I, I have to respect it for that. It was like a falling apart, all the characters. It was like a, a slow falling apart because I don't think in the beginning, she spent months knowing what she knew and then creating a plan. But her plan was like the AIDS thing, being like, okay, your, your everything's going to fall apart. And then when the kids didn't start bullying him, she was like, okay, I need to do this, another step. I need to get to Werther. I need to do this. And then when, like the whole like Noki falling apart. She, I don't think that she ever thought that Noki was going to kill his mom, that any of that was going to happen and that she wasn't planning on killing um, Shuya's mom. But then when he creates a bomb, she's like, oh, now we're at this level. Okay. Well then I got to step in and do something else. Like it's like, she's like, he's getting crazier. And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to save these, this, these people from this bomb, but well, I've got the bomb. Like, what am I going to do with it? You know? <laughs> And also one of my favorite things, I don't know if it says it in the audiobook, but at the end, the about the author, it says that she is a home economics teacher and she wrote it like at school, basically. <laughs> I would be scared if I was a student. Imagine oh my god. Going back to school after reading your teacher's book about <laughs> murdering her students. I would not drink anything she gave me. Absolutely not. You know that she she you have to base this on like real experience, but I'm like, you know that she had to like base this on students. Like she had to have. Just like a little cathartic. (laughs) Okay, I have three questions to wrap it up. I wanna know if you've read anything else or you would read anything else from this author. Um, I wanna know if you're gonna watch the movie and I wanna know if you have any other book recommendations that you would um, tell people to read or, or movies to watch based on this. Okay, um, I would say um, I would definitely read from this author again. I would definitely watch the movie, but I think I've already tried to see if I could find it online. And it's like not available to stream in the UK, I don't think. Mm. Uh, I would really love for it to be because I really want to watch it. Um, but in terms of things I would recommend, not a book per se, but a TV show, uh, two TV shows. One is called Revenge, um, which was on ABC like 10 years ago. It's so good. It's like a, a woman who gets revenge for the things that this really rich community does to her dad when she was is, wait, wait, is that the one the blonde actress that was on marvel yes, yes okay emily yes. van camp yes emily van camp yes. she plays um emily thorne in the in the um at revenge it's so good it's like a a retelling of the count of Monte Cristo almost but it's like so scandalous so juicy but one that i think is more in line with this as well is another tv show um it's a k-drama called the penthouse war in life and i've been raving about it for the past month because it just came on Netflix in the UK. And it's so juicy, scandalous. It's got murder in the first episode. You don't know who did it. When I found out who did it, I was shooketh. I was more shooketh than the end of chapter one, if that's anything to go by. And I was, oh my God, please. The Penthouse, War in Life. It's so good. So I only have TV shows to recommend, not books. No, I love that because I love (laughs) TV shows. I love long story formats where you like- Yeah, same. Yeah, because I used to, Revenge, I used to love, I don't remember if it was a stepmom, but the mom or whatever that her and Emily were always butting heads. Oh, uh, Victoria Grayson, yes. Oh, yes. loved her, love loved her, her so much. Yeah, same. Um, same. I, has she written more than one book? I thought she'd only ever written Penance. Hasn't she only written two books? I've heard people I say think... it's not good, but. Oh, interesting. Um, but I, I will read I, it, no matter I, what. I, yeah, I do want to pick that one up. I think it's about, um, a mom, there's a group of girls who are friends and one of the girls gets like murdered. And so now she's taking out her revenge on those other three girls who like let one of their friends be kidnapped and murdered. Mm-hmm. I will read it. I want to see the movie. I don't know where to watch it, but I, okay, thank God. Well, I'm going to read it no matter what, but um, I want to watch a movie. I don't know where to watch it, but I definitely want to. But I think there's not really luckily i mean not for us but for her there's not really books that you can really say like oh this reminds me of this because she kind of did something that other people really haven't done and she did it well but i think that 
um, something that has like a, a little bit of a similar vibe in terms of like the setting and the constant plot twist is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing because it is in a school and it is the same thing of where you have the two boys. Oh my God, hey! <laughs> like you have the two boys who you don't know which one necessarily did it where the, that's the same thing when you're reading For Your Own Good because there's two teachers who don't really know which one of them did this or if either of them did this and there's constantly plot twists. So I would definitely suggest For Your Own Good. And then when it comes to the psychological torment if you like i think that if you like confessions i think you would like the writing in the push because this book is psychologically messed up like i, oh, I, I want to read that i want to read it <laughs> you, kayla you oh wait no kayla didn't you say you were not going to read this book no i've owned it for a while i i want to read it i just didn't want to read it in a capacity where everyone was telling me it was going to be my favorite book of all time and the pressure of that was a lot so i'll read it oh sometime. no yeah that makes sense i I, I don't even remember what was going on. I like, Gabby said that I wasn't gonna like it. She, she gave it five stars and she was like, you're not gonna like it. Like, it's very slow. And then I, that for some reason she said that and I walked to Target during the pandemic, walked to Target, picked it up full price and walked back home and physically read it. I did not listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is That's, good, but- It sounds like something you would do. Oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna like it? Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby was so surprised. She's like, I did not think that you were going to wait <laughs> through that book. I was like, oh, it was fantastic. You always this keep them guessing. Always this keep is guessing. my recommendation. I had um, For Your Own Good as a recommendation, but I also, I can't find my copy of They Never Learn, but that is a fantastic revenge story, also a school setting. Um, and then I was going to say, just because it's a Japanese thriller, um, Out by Natsuo Kirano is something that I have on my TBR. I haven't read it yet, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. Um, I was actually considering this as a book club pick. Um, so this is what I would maybe recommend. Um, but I've also heard that this, I'm going to put in the comments. Um, it's called The Gun by Fuminori Nakamura. And it's a, it's a psychological torment too about this guy who becomes obsessed with um, collecting guns. And um, you go the whole book like waiting to see if he's going to shoot the gun basically so it's just like this waiting game of like is he eventually going to become so obsessed with guns that he's going to fire one and who's he going to fire it at kind of vibes mm. i've heard that that's really similar well i think that Ooh. the it's a really good like uh idea to have um especially horror but translated horror uh, or translated books for a book club because when i was reading confessions i was like this is what they be doing in Japan. Like, this is different. This is, this is good. God damn. And it, because it was so different. Like, I feel like obviously there is a um, foundation of horror, like in the U S and in the, I mean, even if you look at like mystery thrillers that are written in the UK and mystery thrillers that are written in the U S you always know where they're written. You can tell. Mm -hmm. There's just so many like cultural differences and Totally. I need to read more um, Japanese thrillers. That's what I've decided. Not that I think they're all going to be the same or have the same tone or anything, but I'd be interested to explore it more. I will watch the movie. I, I was considering watching it before the live show, but I didn't want to like change any of my opinions on the book or like have them get mixed up. Mixed that up. happens to yeah. me a lot. I'm same. like, that happened in the movie or that happened in the book and I'm totally wrong. <laughs> um, okay. Anna said, recommended Blood on the Track. So you need to tell me, I've had so many people say that and I have read the first three volumes, but you've got to tell me, it's it's beautiful. Like it is very beautiful, but like it's so slow that I'm like, how are you going to buy this many? I'm like, should, do I keep buying these? Like it's good and it is messed up. Like it has the vibes of confessions, except not gonna get into it but <laughs> but i'm like it's like literally there's like three sentences in each volume it's all art and i'm like i need things to happen sorry i'm happy to be influencing everybody i think we could say this is the most successful book club book this year as far as like general like enjoyment average rating which i think is just very mm. exciting because back. Sometimes the book club gets weird and we never know how it's going to go. Already, the opinions I've seen coming in for Hyde, which is the June book, um, have been questionable. So we'll I just see bought how it. 
Wait, what? Um, what I bought it for thirty-six dollars Canadian. Thirty. Whoa. <laughs> and it's this little. It's tiny. Mm -hmm. What? Whoa. Um. What? Uh, what else has that author written? I know I've heard of Kirsten White. Oh, she wrote um, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Frankenstein. And then she has some different like um, YA series. I think. It's got like Buffy, I think, like Buffy YA or something like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, something like that. Slayer, I really I liked The Dark Descent of Elizabeth yes. Frankenstein, but I'm like, I can't figure out if I want to unhaul it or not because I'm like, did I like it enough to keep it? <laughs> it was good, but. Oh. Oh. Insomnia. Oh, yeah. so well, I to see, but I just took me a second to okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, um, book club members, I will see you in a month to discuss this. I hope we all enjoy it. Um, for now, please check out my wonderful co-hosts links that I hope I put in the description so you can go subscribe. Um, I do think I'm going to do some reading sprints soon after this. So if you want to come back and hang out, I'll be here. You're on okay. the hook. You're on the hook for the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I made a commitment. Okay. Bye, friends. Bye.